Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for his hair raising tail and with me today to tell some hair raising tales is my good friend S. McPeter. Say hi. Eh, what's up docs? As mentioned, this is his hair raising tail released on the 11th of August 1951. It had a blue ribbon reissue sometime in 1960. It's the 627th in the series, and it's directed by Frizz Freeling. You can find this on the Bugs Bunny 80th Anniversary Blu-ray set. I guess it was on streaming, but now it's not, so yeah. In case you haven't seen this one, and we'll go into the whole you, cheetah you probably cartoon. Have, you've seen pieces of it, I'm sure. Exactly. It's just basically Bugs telling stories to his nephew about all the stuff he's done, and his nephew doesn't seem to believe him by the end, so... Yeah. And apparently it, none of it ever happens. He just has this book around that has all these lies. Exactly right, you know, because Bugs is a serial liar, that's for sure. So, <laughs> but in terms of trivia, yeah, as I mentioned, it's a cheetah cartoon. Now, there was one short previously called What's Cooking Doc, where in there, Bugs actually shows a clip of a cartoon, but it makes complete sense in the context. You know, he's trying to jump up support to win an Oscar and, you know, he's yeah. showing a clip. So that makes so sense. Does, so does Tortoise wins by a hair, but that doesn't do anything else to try and beat a cheater. Like in What's Cooking Doc, they have stock footage and just backgrounds for scenes, but Tortoise wins by a hair, that just sets it up. Exactly. But this is the first cheater cartoon where there's basically a framework of sorts. And within that frame, they show clips of earlier cartoons. And I will point out a few differences mm -hmm. very shortly. The cartoons that you see here are Baseball Bugs, Stage Door Cartoon, Rabbit Punch, Falling Hair, and Daredevil Hair. And to me, that's fascinating because you've got a few shorts by Frizz, of course. You've got some by Chuck Jones, and you've even got one by Bob Clampett. So it's a weird mixing all these different mm -hmm. versions of Bugs <laughs> within the one cartoon. Yeah. But This is around the time where the Cheater cartoon really begins to take off as a way to save some money. Because the first Cheater cartoon is from 1925. It is a out of the inkwell called Coco's Thanksgiving, where at Thanksgiving dinner, Coco the Clown shows events in his life, and it reuses footage from earlier out of the inkwell cartoons. And of course, this is not going to be the last Cheetah cartoon in terms Far of... Far from it. This is, when yes. they, this is just when they take off. Exactly right. And I think there's like Arabian Nights of memory and... This is others. a life, technically. Yep, exactly right. Yep. And, you know, I will say that this is a clever way of doing it. And, and of course, once the classic short run is finished, and then a few decades later into late 70s, early and the 80s, we get heaps of these movie and TV compilations where they'll have a framing device mm -hmm. and then they, they just show older cartoons. Although in those cases, they'll typically show a cartoon in full, probably censored, you know, from mm -hmm. pilots, that sort of stuff. But here they just use certain scenes because of course it's a short, shorts within a short, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, Warners didn't really do as many as, as say MGM or Famous Studios. Famous Studios would often do Cheater Popeyes that cut down either on earlier shorts or throughout the 40s and the early 50s, they would cut down the two real color Popeyes that Fleischer did. And of course, MGM, I think almost every season had some sort of cheater from Tom and Jerry. And, and when they began doing CinemaScope, they began remaking entire cartoons. Exactly. And a lot of it's just budgetary reasons, mm -hmm. just to fill a quota. So that Yeah, this was around the time where this is the really early beginning of when theaters were struggling and the budgets were getting cut. This is the very earliest, I guess you could say. But how does this work out for this particular short? It's, look, it's it's a good idea, I think, but the execution, uh, it didn't quite work for me. I mean, I will say the nephew's got a pretty weird design. I don't know, there's something about it. I Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is pretty much Virgil Ross doing the animation. I think it looks like him. I think so. No, I, I, th I think it's pretty much just Virgil Ross. I mean, I'm starting to but this is get yeah. A hang about yeah. yeah. I don't have too much of a hang up. I get a little iffy because it's around the time that Chiniki would have left. Yeah. It looks like this is Clyde's first appearance. I don't. I don't think he was a comics character before this. Don't think so. In, in any case, it's still really strange design. I don't know. There's something about it that's a little, little yeah. off-putting to me. It's, it's mostly the blue ears and just, he look, kind of looks like a McKimson character than a Freeling design. You know, that that's a good point. He kind of does look like He has, a he has sort character. of that more feral look that's in McKimson's 40s cartoons <laughs> than a first Freeling cartoon. It's, when they it's... do the revivals like Bugs Bunny's Looney Christmas Tales, they pretty much just copy his face 
from Bugs, which actually looks better. Yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, the way that they reuse the scenes as well, it's actually quite fascinating mm -hmm. because I am familiar, of course, with all those shorts. I've actually covered them all on the channel, some mm -hmm. of which I have to bring back through his reviews again. So three of the shorts are pretty much, they just took clips as is, and they just mm -hmm. put them in, which of course stage of cartoon. Rabbit Punch, they cut a little bit, and it's actually implied that this boxing match would have gone on forever if not for World War II, which I thought was pretty clever. It's an each different take mm -hmm. on it. Falling Hair, yeah, they just pretty much took the same mm -hmm. scene. But Baseball Bugs, they did it in such a weird way that they used an earlier gag with that screaming ball, but they cut it in such a way that it was actually yeah. Bugs doing the screaming ball this time, which I thought was yeah, very I, I think interesting. It's, I thought it was... I wish they kind of edited the rest of them like they were putting some effort into it because Baseball Bugs, which is, of course, a fantastic picture that everyone here's seen, it, it's edited... It's actually given some effort to make it a bit more original. The way they okay. would do these cheater cartoons is that not they wouldn't go back to the original master. They would probably take something like a dupe negative... Mm. or perhaps a positive and then they would then they would do edits on it and then they would print it and then staple it onto the rest of the footage yeah which so, is why the older the cartoon the softer it looks it because they're using just the negative for his hair rising tail yeah but then it, here's a fascinating one because the way it's edited if you watch the cartoon of course we've got a whole thing with marvin the martian on the moon right but mm -hmm. here it's just implied that he goes on this rocket he goes to the moon, and what? The moon just blows up from the rocket, and that's it? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was kind yeah. of amusing that it's just... Yeah, that, that's, that that's, that's another good part. Exactly. But, you know, but this one kind of just is a misfire, mostly just because of the fact that Clyde doesn't believe bugs, and we're led to believe that none of this ever happened, especially with the whole streetcar gag. But yeah. the thing is that, of course, with how Bugs is, we know that he is not a liar. We know that he does the impossible. It just kind of doesn't work. Exactly. I do like the, the streetcar going through the house. After those. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's really interesting is that they use a streetcar gag, and it's in 1951, where around that time in Los Angeles, they infamously were, were slowly getting rid of the streetcar. You know, watch you frame Roger Rabbit, and that's pretty much what happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was a really interesting, I guess, choice in that. But... Ultimately, yeah, I think this is a misfire. I do like the parts that they use, but honestly, it just makes me want to go back and watch those cartoons in full. And let's be fair as well. The cinema goal was at the time wouldn't have known or cared really. Yeah. Some may have remembered, oh, yeah. I might have seen it, something, but... I'm but sure they got a good kick out of the end. And I'm sure there were some laughs, but even then, I just don't think... I guess this is with most cheater cartoons. They just kind of feel dull because of the fact that they're forced to use old footage that, rather than just come up with something. Yeah, and I think part of it is when people are watching cartoons, these were designed to be shown in the cinema for X amount of times and then pretty much never shown again. You know, reruns were practically unheard of until, well, in this case, the Blue Ribbon mm -hmm. reissue program started um, kicking off. But yeah, people wouldn't have sat there going, oh, I've seen this before, I've seen this before. Maybe one or two people might have here and there, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But for us now, watching it in now 2023, yeah, it's it is what it is. Let, let's do that. So you know, six yeah. out. I I'll give it six out of ten. It, it's it's fine for what it is. Yeah. but I'm just like Meh. I'm um, yeah. I'm on par with you with that. Be just because it is well produced. It has nice character animation in the new bits, and it is nice seeing the old clips. But it just doesn't work together as a full cartoon. Yeah, definitely one of the lesser ones of 1951. Yeah. The only the only real good cheater cartoons ones that really hold up as well as say a fully produced cartoon is the adventures of Popeye from Fleischer and the previously mentioned What's Cooking Knock. Those are the only real cheaters I can think of that really do something well with doing that. This is a life comes to mind too, but I don't really think of that one too much as a cheater because they do a lot with the new bits. Exactly. And here, just, yeah, it's just a quick framing device and out the door, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But we'll wrap it up there. So th thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, take care. That's all, folks. Why, if everything I've told you isn't true, I, uh, uh, I hope I'm run over by a streetcar. I suppose you don't believe I was run over by a streetcar.